Hello everyone and welcome back to this nanophotonics and plasmonics course. Now that we've introduced the concept of optical antennas and we defined the key properties of nano antennas, uh, let's focus on the specific examples of plasmonic antennas. So plasmonic nano antennas, uh, they come in different varieties, different sizes, different compositions, uh, very similar to uh, regular antennas so that they have been designed uh, depending on the applications from re regular just dipole antennas uh, with just uh, different morphologies but these are all dipole antennas you see that because of these designs as dimers for instance they're able to to uh, to localize the electromagnetic fields uh, very locally so if you place uh, a quantum emitter uh, in these gaps you would be able to to really transduce the the electromagnetic field from this quantum emitter into free space very uh, efficiently. Uh, they can play with the size, the distribution. Uh, so you see that you have those um, uh, those series very much like the, the rake uh, antennas for, 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 for TV sets. Uh, so these are Yagi Wood antennas. Uh, we can actually calculate uh, the energy field distribution, the radiation patterns on those guys. And we're gonna focus on uh, on these two type of uh, antennas. So the dipole antenna and the Yagi Wood antenna in the next slides. Uh, so I'm going to just look at some of the properties and we can actually also calculate uh, using FDTD how uh, the, those antennas operate. So the first one, uh, which is the simplest one, is the dipole antenna. Uh, that's the one at the, at the very top. Uh, we can look at this dipole antenna and this is very similar to regular antennas that have, uh, we've introduced already earlier on. Uh, and this is just basically uh, two uh, two lines of conductors that are being extended in opposite directions. Uh, in our case, we don't need any extension because the, the transmitter will be actually placed inside the, the, this gap. So that's going to be the quantum emitter. So the dipole antenna is the simplest form of, uh, of antenna that we can think of. Um, and uh, the length of these uh, this nano rods, the length of these uh, this extensions is really uh, taken uh, such as that it's basically either uh, half or a quarter of the wavelength uh, of the emission you want. So this is designed with a certain size to operate at a certain wavelength. Um, so this can be fabricated fairly easily. So in this case, it's just uh, it will mean lithography. Uh, you can calculate those properties uh, using uh, FDTD, for instance, or any other computational method. You can look at how the electromagnetic field is actually being uh, localized for a given wavelength and you see that in this case it's really localized uh, to, to a very small region of space so it's really uh, highly localized electromagnetic field down to the nanoscale. Um, so this antenna is going to radiate so this is the radiation pattern uh, that we discussed basically the, giving you how much uh, energy is being uh, emitted in a given direction so you see that it's going to emit most, most of its energy in a transverse direction and there's going to be no emission uh, in the longitudinal direction. So this is a dip clear dipolar uh, emission pattern. So, um, and as I said, if you place a quantum emitter in the, at the center, you'll be able to actually radiate uh, light very efficiently from, from there uh, due to the very large scattering cross-section of these uh, this dipolar nano antennas. The second type of antenna I want to focus on is the, the Yagi Wood antenna. So uh, this is what I grew up with uh, before the cable and satellites. Uh, we had just uh, those uh, antenna rakes on the on the rooftops for our TV sets. This is, uh, but this is a very directional antenna. So uh, it's really directional. So meaning that if it was actually not aligned properly toward the 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 emitters, you were actually not being able to receive the channels properly. So uh, the days where you had actually strong winds. Uh, the antenna was actually uh, moving and uh, you, you could actually see the, the image quality on the screen that was actually going down is because this is really directional, unidirectional antennas and we're going to see that in a minute with FDTD simulations. Um, so it consists of uh, multiple parallel elements. The size of those elements are chosen to be fractions of the, the wavelength. So once again, this is operating in a, in a very specific uh, range of uh, frequencies or wavelength. Uh, the much larger uh, element here is called the refractor. It's basically responsible for keeping the, the emission uh, in, a, in a given direction. 
uh, and you'll be able to actually look at this effect in the FDTD simulation. The second one is called the feed. This is basically the, the one which is connected to the to the transmitter or to the to the receiver. Uh, so for a nano antenna, this is where we're going to be placing the quantum emitter, for instance, the quantum dot. So let's look at a quick uh, FDTD simulation to see uh, what happens. If you compute the electric ma electromagnetic field propagation of the uh, yagi Yoda antenna, you place an electric dipole, uh, it's going to serve as a quantum emitter uh, in, the, in the gap here, and you just basically uh, set the wavelength of this quantum emitter to 1280 nanometers, which correspond to the, to the operating mode of this, this particular antenna. And this is what you obtain from the simulation. So you have uh, the electric dipole emitting the radiation, and it's basically uh, driving the antenna to emit along this uh, this direction. So you can see uh, once again that the emission is unidirectional. Uh, it's going along that particular direction. So there's a certain uh, distrib angular distribution of radiation. So this is basically describing the radiation pattern. Uh, and you see that the reflector here is really protecting the, the, the dipole to emit uh, backward in the backward direction. Now, on the other hand, if you place an electric dipole with a different wavelength, uh, say 600 nanometers, uh, and you excite these uh, this, this nanostructures, you see that now we won't be resonant and the antenna won't emit any radiation uh, as opposed to the previous, uh, the previous case. So if you place a quantum dot on this, uh, this uh, yagi Udon antenna, this is what we've done. You can really drive uh, a, a unidirectional uh, emission of radiations uh, converting from this, this quantum dot. Um, this is uh, also the, the, the way we can, we can characterize, plotting this, uh, calculating this uh, radiation pattern, something you can do also in a DTD, and you're going to see that it's more directional. Uh, and basically, uh, this is what um, the whole purpose of those type of antennas are really driving the emission of uh, electromagnetic radiations in a given direction from a quantum emitter, which we otherwise be emitting in different directions. So I encourage you to, to, to perform those uh, FDTD simulations yourself, play around with the, the wavelength of the quantum emitter. Uh, you can play around with the, the size of the, uh, of the, the different roads you played with actually removing maybe the reflector or removing the feed. Uh, you will see that if you remove the reflector, uh, you're not going to get a unidirectional uh, emission. If you remove the feed, you're not going to get any emission. Uh, so I strongly encourage you to, to play with those things so you can understand a bit better the design of those nano antennas. We have already seen that uh, we can actually use those nano antennas on, uh, on probes uh, from uh, near field optical microscopes. Uh, so you can actually really uh, interact with quantum emitters locally. So this is a way which is more dynamic. You can really manipulate those, uh, those antennas and I encourage you to go back to chapter three and nine to, uh, to revisit those, uh, those concepts of nano antennas as, uh, as probes for near field optical microscopy. Why those radio wave antennas that you have, they are actually connected to a, to a transmitter that basically drives uh, the antenna via an electric current or collect the, the signal from those antennas and convert them into electric current for your radio or for your TV. Quantum emitters are gonna be playing the role of the, of the transmission line. Uh, in those plasmid nano antenna, this is what we've done in FDT simulation with an electric dipole. Um, so the details uh, on the spontaneous emission and the st uh, stimulated emission process of those quantum emitters uh, will not be covered in this chapter. Uh, you can find more uh, in the Novotny's uh, textbook. You can also go back uh, to chapter five on quantum emitters. And here we're just going to focus on how these quantum emitters will actually interact and benefit from the nano antennas. So uh, if you have quantum emitters that are placed on the substrate, you can bring this nano antenna nearby. Uh, and because of the, the local electric field, you're gonna uh, have this, uh, this, uh, this interaction. And you can look at how the, uh, the emission of the, uh, the quantum emitter changes uh, as you move this, uh, this plasmonic nano antenna close by or away from the, from the dipole. So if you change the separation distance between this uh, plasma nano antenna, in this case it's a, a 80 nanometer gold nanoparticle, you have quantum emitter, uh, which is just a molecule or a quantum dot, 
and if you if you change you, you can change the the vertical uh, positioning of this nano antenna and therefore the separation distance between the quantum dot, uh, the quantum meter and the plasma nano antenna. So when the nano antenna is basically further away, so the quantum meter is just uh, emitting light on its own. Uh, you have a certain uh, light emission process which is uh, which is happening. When you bring the nano antenna closer, you see the, uh, the the light emission process from the quantum dot is actually increasing. So you have a, uh, a much more uh, you have much more emission from the quantum emitter uh, as you approach this nano antenna to the to the emitter. This way, uh, this region you have this fluorescence enhancements. You reach the maximum. You have a maximum emission uh, from the quantum emitter, so you can really drive very efficiently an enhancement of this uh, fluorescence emission from the, the quantum emitter. Now, if you continue approaching uh, to the to the quantum emitter, you actually start uh, decreasing the emission, so the emission becomes less efficient. This is known as quenching. Um, and basically then the antenna is basically defeating uh, its own purpose. So what's happening? Uh, well, we have to actually go back to the intrinsic properties of quantum emitters. Uh, so the radiation rate, the emission rate of the, of the quantum emitter, and this can be affected by the local environment. Quantum emission of a quantum emitter uh, is actually altered by the local density of electromagnetic state. Uh, so in the case of a plasma nano antenna, these uh, local electromagnetic states are given by the local surface plasmons. So uh, when you're looking at the coupling between a quantum emitter and a plasmonic nano antenna, uh, you actually need to also account for additional relaxation channels uh, that will actually strongly influence the emission rates. Uh, and this is basically what's going to give you the, the quenching. What's happening? Uh, so if you have a quantum emitter uh, with a certain uh, radiation uh, rate or emission rate, this is basically just the spontaneous emission. If the, the quantum dot uh, or quantum uh, or the molecule is isolated from the nanoparticle, this is basically what's going to just dictate how much light is being radiated. This is the interesting property of the quantum emitter. Now, when you bring the nanoparticle closer, uh, because of the, the presence of uh, uh, the surface plasma resonances, you're going to increase the local uh, density of electromagnetic states uh, at the location of this uh, this quantum emitter, and therefore you're gonna drive this fluorescence enhancement or per cell, uh, per cell effect, and you're gonna basically uh, enhance the radiation so the by uh, the per cell factor. Uh, once again, you can go back to chapter five to to look at these uh, uh, quantum emitters and per cell effect. Now, if you bring this even closer, what's gonna happen is that then you're gonna be opening this new additional relaxation channel, uh, which is a non-radiative uh, decay channel from the quantum emitter. So this quantum emitter is gonna basically uh, donate some energy to the nanoparticle uh, and in the form of non-radiative uh, relaxation. And therefore you're gonna decrease the radiative component. So the total uh, uh, amount of energy which is lost by the, uh, by the quantum emitter is gonna remain the same. You're going to increase the non-radiative component. You're, not, you're not going to decrease the radiative component, and this is what uh, we call fluorescence uh, quenching. And finally, uh, we can just uh, also highlight the fact that uh, there's not only dipole resonances that can be used uh, to enhance radiations and serve as antennas. You can use I/O other modes, uh, whether it's a quadrupole or a hexapole or uh, whatever mode. And this is because uh, they have different radiation patterns. So this is the radiation pattern of a dipole nano antenna. And then when you, you go to IO the modes, you see that you have uh, those different radiation, radiation patterns that become more uh, unidirectional antennas, uh, but uh, they also uh, may become more difficult to actually uh, excite and use. Uh, the fields may be actually weaker as well. Uh, so you can play with the, the type of, uh, of plasma resonance you have uh, to design your own optical antenna. To summarize, uh, we've seen the concept of an optical nano antenna, uh, discussing the, the type of uh, photophysical effect that can be enhanced via the presence of an optical nano antenna. We uh, discussed about the, the principle of an antenna in general, discussed about their properties, uh, and then we uh, we discussed uh, some designs of plasmonic nano antennas, such as the uh, the dipole uh, antenna, the Yagi Uda antenna, uh, and we, we've seen that uh, they can be actually used to enhance fluorescence, for instance, and we discussed about the, uh, this concept of, of quenching, 
Uh, and once again, those, uh, those things are also connected to uh, the chapters like chapter 5 on quantum emitters and chapter 11 on optical spectroscopy.